unstoppable we'll shout your praise forevermore jesus our god at our church we love god make no mistake about that at our church we believe jesus is god we're not asking you to change your belief system before you attend our church. We're simply inviting you on a journey toward Jesus. We believe that prayer moves the hand of God, and it's normal for every believer to be intimate with God and devoted to His cause. At our church, we believe the Bible is God's Word. It's real, it's living, and it's active. We believe freedom is the heart of God for every believer, and we value humor, simplicity, teamwork, and a positive outlook on life. At our church, we're about developing great relationships with God, each other, and those in our community. At our church, we believe that Jesus really lived, that he really died on the cross, and that he really rose again on the third day. And we cannot and will not water down or candy coat that message, ever. And finally, and most importantly, at our church, we're not concerned about where you've been, but where you're going. We believe that all people matter to God, and therefore matter to us. Today, you have chosen to sit yourself in the middle of a very safe place to hear a potentially life-changing message. Welcome, Welcome to, to our, our church. church. over us and protect us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, O oh God. Have your way, O oh God, in Jesus' precious name. Somebody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, we used to be a, 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 a wretch undone. <laughs> we used to be a mess, some of us. Some messes bigger than others. But once we came into Christ and gave our life to Christ, guess what? We are new. Old things have passed away. So when the enemy tries to say you're the same old person, come to Christ, guess what? You're a completely new person. Now you're a mess for the Lord, but since you're not a mess, you're a blessing from the Lord. Amen. <laughs> he that be in Christ is a new creature. Come on. Come on, put your hands together.
Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise today. Amen. 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 You may be seated this morning for just a few moments today. I hope everybody is doing well. Hey, listen, I want to say a, a huge, huge thank you to everybody that came out Thursday and Saturday and helped out with our community outreach at our Fish Clothes event. We gave out about 230, 232 boxes to our families. Amen. And, um, and listen, it was cold, and uh, we had about 33 people or so who, uh, who came out Saturday and helped us uh, distribute the food on Saturday, and that was a huge blessing because we had plenty of people that, that once, you, once you got froze, we slid you inside, you thawed, and the next group was still working, and when they froze, you were unthawed enough to go back outside and slide them back in. So they could be followed. So we had a lot of help and a lot of support to be able to get it done. It wasn't a lot of work for one group of people. And I I just want to say thank you very much. I truly, truly appreciated uh, all of your help. Um, I have just a a few announcements this morning. Um, uh, One is beginning February the 3rd, we're starting our adult Sunday school class back. Adult Sunday, not Sunday school class. We're starting our adult Bible study back again on Thursdays at 1 p.m. So every Thursday at 1 p.m. beginning February the 3rd, we're going to start a, the adult Bible study. Keith is still trying not to laugh at me. <laughs> we're, we're still going to have the adult Bible study at 1 p.m. on Thursday beginning February the 3rd. Uh, Sister Wilma Nemec is leading that class. And uh, yes, come on now. It's going to be good. Listen, it's going to start off with a 12-week study of the book of John. So uh, it's a powerful book. Um, it's going to be a great study and a great time for you to learn. So uh, make sure that you uh, get with Sister Nemec. Um, the book, I posted the book on our Facebook page, so you should be able to go scroll through and find the book, the link to the book, um, so that you can order the book and begin to, uh, to read and begin to follow along with the study. But it will begin February the 3rd at 1 p.m., here at the church. And then the second announcement I have for you is um, we're having a, uh, a dinner, an evening of fellowship, fun, food for married and engaged couples. So if you're married or if you're engaged, we want to invite you February the 11th, that's Friday night, 
February the 11th at 6.30 p.m. here at the church. Um, we're going to have dinner, fun, games, activities, all kinds of things going on. But we're also having food catered in. We're having Olive Garden. We'll be catering the food in for the meal that evening. So we want you to come and sign up. There's sign-up sheets out in the front, there's, uh, red sheets of paper on both the table in the back, and then at the front table there's a, there's a sheet. Make sure you sign up on one of those sheets. Um, the sign-up is going to be closed February the 7th. So we want everybody to sign up so we can make sure we have enough food and activities and events. So, so by February the 7th, that'll be the sign-up date. And then there's an email address. Go to that email address there, Blake. There you go. I can't read that at the bottom. <laughs> you Listen, cross point praise. Get your cameras out. Take a picture of it. If you need to get cameras, take a picture of it. But we want you guys to send in... Um, some very early pictures of you and your wife or you, you and your husband or you and, and your, your significant other that you're engaged to be wed to. We want you to send those pictures in to that email address by February the 7th. So make sure you, uh, you pulled out those, those pictures. I, I was teasing the first service. I said, I know some of you guys don't have pictures. They didn't have cameras way back then. So if you bring your stone tablets in, we'll take a picture of it and, and send it to you. Um, but uh, it was. But I was just kidding. Um, but listen, uh, make sure you sign up for those. And then, uh, and then, uh, the women's conference renewal 2022. Uh, Pastor Kendra will be speaking at the women's conference in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. I know some of you ladies have signed up. Some of you are still talking about signing up. Um, they've already run out of one set of rooms, and they're about to run out of another set of rooms, and that may be all the rooms. That hotel may end up being full. So. Uh, um, if you're if you're signed up, let Pastor Kendra know. If you're going to sign up, let her know. I can check and see if there's any hotel rooms left um, for you. But uh, but get with her today so we can make sure we we try to accommodate you the best that that we can for this event. Um, we are taking the church van, so you don't have to drive independent or separate from each other. We had some people say, you know what, that's a really long drive for me. Um, you don't have to drive; you can just ride, and and we'll have somebody available just going to take the van down. So you don't have to do those things. So make sure um, if you're going or you're planning on going, make sure you see Pastor Kendra um, for uh, to let her know that you're planning on going. Uh, but, uh, two, two special requests. One, I want us to continue to pray for those that are sick with COVID. Um, it seems to be increasing around our area. Um, I, it doesn't worry me. It doesn't scare me. But, but we need to pay attention to what's going on, and we need to continue to do our part. Um, to, to remain healthy so that our church can remain to be open. Um, I've said several times, if you're sick, if you think you're sick or you think that you might be sick, just stay home. Stay home, miss the service, and uh, make sure everything's good, and then come back to the next service. No big deal. Um, just watch. We provide live streams for the 11 o'clock, so make sure you can tune in and be with us there in the 11 o'clock. But, um, but then the second prayer request I have is for Rosalind. It's the young lady that I shared with about on Facebook. Uh, Rosalind and Sean uh, were, were young people at the church we pastored in North Carolina. And Rosalind, a week ago, was in a horrific car accident, several surgeries. Um, I've been trying to keep you updated on Facebook as much as I can. Um, so, so remember Rosalind. And then the third one, I have Kit Brown. Um, he's at Lehigh Medical Center in Pennsylvania. He's 42. Um, he was uh, diagnosed with covid um, through the process of COVID, he was placed on a ventilator. While on a ventilator, he had a stroke. And they're unable to do surgery or unable to do a whole lot for him right now. Um, but, but you know what? The doctors can do what they can do, and God can do something greater. Amen? So I want you to remember Kit Brown in your uh, prayer as well today. Uh, stand with me this morning. For ushers will come this morning to receive our tithes and offerings and Listen, Pastor Kendra, she preached a fantastic message um, in the first service, and I, I expect her to, to do it again, you know. Uh, I know snow's coming. I know it's cold outside. I, I was joking with EJ when he come in. I said, I said, you know it's cold outside when you put on pants. <laughs> it is really cold outside. So, uh, listen, I, I, want you guys to, uh, I want you guys to set your hearts and your minds in this time of worship, I want you to prepare to receive this powerful word that Pastor Kendra has for you this morning. Amen.
Father, we thank you today, God, for your love. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for being here with us today, God. We thank you, Lord, for the touch and the move of the Holy Spirit, God, in our first service, God, and the lives that were changed, God. I ask you, Father, Lord, to set our hearts, God, and to set our minds, Lord, on you this morning. Remove every distraction, God. Remove every thought of snow or storm or whatever's coming in. God, don't even let us look out the windows this morning. But, God, keep our focus on you, God, that we may receive your word, God, and may be transformed and renewed and encouraged, God, by the power of your word. God, I pray today, Father, Lord, for the request, God, that were spoken here this morning, God, and Kit, Father, Lord, in Pennsylvania. God, I ask you, Lord, to move, God, upon Rosalind and Kit right now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I ask you, Father, Lord, to do the divine in their life, God. Lord, that they may blow the minds of the doctors, Father, Lord, and the physicians that's around them, Father. I ask you, Lord, to, to, to do a miracle, God. To you, it's just what you do. But to us, God, it's a miracle, Father, Lord. And I ask you, Lord, to touch them right now where they are in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, I ask you, Lord, to bless us, Father, Lord, financially, God. Continue to bless us in our tithes and our offering, God, and our gifts and our giving today, God. I ask you, Lord, to bless them, multiply them, God, that we may remain, Father, Lord, the church that you've called and purposed for us to be. In Jesus' name, amen.
of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. 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 Come on, church. Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble. You make the darkness tremble. It has to flee.
we wait for you. We wait for you. We wait for you. Yes. We wait. We wait for you. Hallelujah. To walk in the room. Now open your mouth and say, here we are. Here we are. Stand. Here we are. Standing in your presence. Here we are. Standing in your presence, Shekinah glory come down, Shekinah glory here come we are. down. Here we are, standing in your presence, here we are, standing in your presence, Shekinah glory come down. Come on, release. release the
us. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, praise team. I don't know about you, but I'm excited to be in the house of God this morning. I'm excited to see what his presence brings us. Because I know in the 830 service, we have already felt a move of his presence. And that Shekinah glory has already met with us this morning. He's already here. And he's ready to take up a boat again this morning. He's ready to bless us. He's ready to move in ways that we don't understand as long as we are open vessels. Hallelujah. This morning, I want you to turn with me. To Mark 5, verse 21 through 43, and I'm not going to read this text, but as I preach, I'm going to be bringing out parts of this text. This is a familiar story. This is the story of Jairus and his daughter laying on a deathbed. And as we look at our text in Mark, we find that this is a, Jairus is a religious leader. He is a man who had many religious responsibilities among his people. He was well respected and loved. Jairus was a ruler of the synagogue. He was a holy man, a man that believed in God, a man that had served God, a man that had given up his life to see others find God. And yet here, this man who had served God with everything that he had, he was facing some problems, some problems that he would have been well acquainted with, some problems that he had probably helped some of those in the synagogue over the years face. Pastor Jairus has not had sure at times had went and had visited some of the members of his church, had helped them through some troubles and some issues. And yet we find in the scriptures that this well-respected religious leader now was faced with what was a real tragedy in his own residence. His daughter lay sick in her bed. She was at the point of death. Jairus had gotten the best doctors. He had tried everything. The doctors had tried everything that they knew. And yet the doctors came to Jairus and said, it's no use. She's dying. All hope is lost. There is nothing else that we can do. If you have ever had a sick child, you can imagine the emotions that Jairus was feeling He may have questioned God. He may have blamed God for his misfortune. He may have been angry looking at God and saying, I've served you my entire life. I've given you everything I have, and yet here I am facing my daughter dying. Can you imagine the desperation that Jairus would have had? He was in a desperate situation. He was feeling hopeless. But this morning, I came to remind you that being desperate can trigger a transformation. Desperation can bring about a transformation. It doesn't mean that it's a bad thing to find yourself in desperation if you know where to turn. Hallelujah. In desperation, this religious leader remembers there's this young rabbi that everyone has been talking about. There's a young rabbi that he's heard so much about and This rabbi has been turning the Pharisees and scribes' viewpoint on religion upside down. He's been causing a stir, and he remembers that this young rabbi has been teaching in the local synagogues, and he's been drawing huge crowds, and he remembers that this man has the power to heal a young man by the name of Jesus He had healed a man with a withered hand. And then there's the story that about the insane man living among the tombs. And they say that Rabbi Jesus has healed him and that he was found at the feet of his parents in his right mind. And then he heard the story about a wedding where the rabbi turned water into wine. And whether it was true or not, and whether he was a true prophet or not, Jairus didn't know yet. 
all he knew, all he knew was that he had a sick daughter and he needed some help. I'm not sure if Jairus understand the situation that he was in, but all Jairus knew was that he was desperate and his desperation was about to trigger a transformation. Hallelujah. So on this particular day, in the midst of his tremendous need, his desperation led him to seek out Jesus. And when Jairus finds Jesus at the shore, great crowds were already there. And verse 21 says, many people, much people had gathered unto him. And I'm not sure, but in my mind, I would think that this father, this elite man of God, had began to rehearse in his mind what that he was going to say and the proper and the poised way that he was going to come to Jesus and was going to ask him, can you please follow me to my house? Can you come to my house to help me out? But whenever he got at the face of Jesus, whenever his eyes met his Savior, whenever he saw Jesus, all the dignity, all the poise that he had, it went out the window. Church, let me tell you something. Whenever you get at the feet of Jesus, whenever you come to a desperate situation, whenever you meet the eyes of your Savior, all dignity that you have, goes out the window hallelujah it's hard to be dignified whenever there are tears streaming down your eyes it's hard to be dignified whenever you're flat at your on your face crying out to savior hallelujah there are some of you this morning who've never experienced that kind of undignified praise whenever you lose all composure, whenever you forget about everyone that's around you, whenever you forget about how everyone around you is going to talk about you, whenever you're sitting there and you're at the feet of your Savior and you begin to lose all composure. You see, but then there are some of us, there are some of us who have been through some things. There are some of us who have faced some situations. Come on now, you're being quiet on me this morning. But there are some of us who have been through some stuff and we get a little bit of undignified praise at some times. We don't care who's around. We don't care who's looking at us because we know where God's brought us from. You remember how God delivered you. You remember how God saved you. And you can't help but get a little ugly for the Lord. Am I right? Hallelujah. You can't help but let out a little bit of undignified praise whenever that bill's got paid, whenever that child's been delivered, whenever that sickness has been healed, whenever you realize that God's grace has been sufficient, that he's been walking with you all this time. You can't help but get a little undignified whenever you look into the eyes of your husband and you know that you're looking at a walking, talking, breathing miracle whenever you've seen the scans of the bypasses that God created. You can help but get a little undignified. Church, you can sit there quiet on me this morning, but I'm a woman of God who has seen what God can do. And if I get a little undignified, if my hair gets messed up, if my mascara runs, I don't care because I know what God has done for me. I believe somebody in this church this morning needs to remember what God has done for them, the times that God has brought them through, the time that he's met your need. I wish somebody would get a little undignified this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, come on and give him some praise. You're too quiet. Whenever you've been through some stuff, you're going to fall down and you're going to worship like Jarius did. Hallelujah. It's this man's faith that compelled Jesus to follow. Notice that as soon as Jarius spoke his faith, Jesus was attracted by that faith and went with him to heal her. Jesus didn't speak a word to Jarius. He didn't say a word. He simply went with him. 
Look at that text. Look at verse 24. It says, and Jesus went with him. He didn't say a word. He didn't have to give him any encouragement. He just picked up and he started walking with him. My friend, what this verse is telling us, and many of us skip over it, is at the very moment that you place your faith in Jesus, he immediately begins to walk with you. He doesn't leave you. He doesn't forsake you. But he takes every step with you. With you he becomes that omnipotent bodyguard well what is a bodyguard Kendra a bodyguard follows you around a bodyguard makes sure no danger comes your way a bodyguard will remove those crazy people those people who don't have your best interest at heart out of your way that bodyguard will protect you and he will take care of business listen to me this morning church you've got a bodyguard if you have place your faith in him you can walk with confidence knowing that you are not alone that you've got somebody who's taking every step with you and Jesus went with him hallelujah Jairus must have been feeling pretty good at this point he must have thought okay everything's going good but then an interruption in verse 25, in the midst of all this dramatic text, Jesus was interrupted as he and Jairus and the disciples were making their way through the multitude. A woman came up behind Jesus and secretly touched the hem of his garment. Now put yourself in this father's place. He was desperate. He had worked hard to make his way through the crowds to find Jesus. He had sought Jesus out to beg him to come and heal his, her, his daughter who was right there on death's door. Now Jesus, he was just taking his time. And Jairus was like, it's time to go. Let's hurry up. I need you to come as quickly as possible. There's not a moment to lose. She could die at any moment. Then this woman had the audacity to come up and demand something of Jesus on the journey to Jairus' house. Jesus stops and ministers to her. And Jairus is left standing there to watch the scene and thinking to himself, this isn't fair. This woman's been sick for 12 years. He needs to come with me and heal my daughter. She's about to die right now. Besides, this woman's unclean. She doesn't even have the right to be here. She should be stoned for being here in public. She was an unwelcomed interruption. I don't know about you, but I have learned to appreciate and I have learned to thank God for the interruptions that he sends in my life. Hallelujah. You see, just when you think things are going so well, then here comes an interruption. Just when Pastor and I think everything is good and everything's okay and it's going smooth, then here comes an interruption. Just when your health seems to be improving and you're about to get that promotion, here comes an interruption. But I've learned over the years to thank God for every interruption. I've learned to live my life through Romans 8, 28, knowing that every good and bad thing is going to come together for my good. I have learned that I, no matter what happens through every interruption, I'm going to give God my uninterrupted praise. It doesn't matter what Satan tries to hurl at me. It doesn't matter the sickness he tries to place. It doesn't matter the people he tries to put in my way. God will get my uninterrupted praise and I'm going to move forward and I'm going to thank God for every interruption hallelujah listen to me this morning interruptions are not sent to harm you but to help you they are potential gifts from God God has a much better plan for your day than you do the interruption in the life of Jairus would be used to elevate his faith to another level. Jairus was about to see that God answers those who have faith in him. Jesus was taking up 
precious time with this social outcast when it seemed that she should have been dealing with a daughter of an elite synagogue ruler. Hallelujah. Hearing this should make somebody shout this morning because these verses are proof that Jesus is no respecter of person. He's going to minister to the highest ranking official. He's going to minister to the outcast of society. And it doesn't matter who you are or where you've been or how bad you have sinned or how low you have become. There is a God who still loves you. There is a God who is still for you hallelujah there is a God who wants to save deliver and heal and listen to me God is not looking for those who have wealth position or power all he is looking for is someone with enough faith someone who will trust him enough to walk with him he hears your cries he's seen your tears don't lose faith this morning he sees you he knows who you are remain faithful hallelujah thank you jesus this woman with the issue of blood was healed because of her faith. Can you only imagine how Jairus' spirits must have been lifted as he witnessed this healing miracle for himself? He had to be thinking in his head, if, if he can heal her, then he can heal my daughter. If he did it for her, he can do it for me. That must have lifted his spirits. He must have been walking pretty high and mighty and feeling good, thinking, I've got this under control. But isn't it just like Satan not to allow us to enjoy good news for long? As he was standing there watching Jesus talk to this woman, a message is on the way that will burst Jairus' bubble, that will literally rock his world. As Jesus is talking with the woman, messengers come they tell him that his daughter has died, so there's no reason to trouble the master any further. And Jesus hears the negativity that is being spoken into this man and the negativity that is trying to steal the faith that Jairus has placed in the Savior. And Jesus turns to him and he says the most transforming words in verse 36. He says, be not afraid only believe hallelujah be not afraid only believe in other words what jesus was saying is don't panic he was saying keep calm and don't be afraid he was telling this man to act just as he had been acting before he received this bad report now wait a minute and i want you to listen to this the bad report was given and the bible says as soon as jesus heard it he addressed jairus be not afraid only believe and i'm going to preach right here for a minute because what happens all too often as believers is that you and i fail as soon as jairus received the bad news there was a word from the mouth of god but too many times you and i whenever we receive bad news we spend too much time doing everything else before we go to the word of god we whine we cry we complain we fall out in the floor we start asking why me we get on the telephone and we ask our friends what should we do how should we handle it then when we get to our breaking point that's when we go to jesus church our first go to in the time of trouble should be to go to the one who spoke to the seas and they were still the one who healed the sick and blind the one who spoke to all of creation and it was formed i want you this morning to understand what i'm trying to get across to you stop looking to man for the answers stop thinking that you're going to find your answer in someone who is mortal the answer lies in the one who created you who gave you life the one is the answer lies in the one who died for you on a cruel cross who so 
lovingly formed you with his very own hands. Look into the face of the one who created you. Look at him and listen to him saying to you, be not afraid, yet only believe. Hallelujah. He's speaking into your situation. He has a word for you. If you will just believe, as far as Jesus was concerned, death was no greater challenge than sickness. He knew he had the power to restore health, and he had the power to restore life. That's why he told Jairus not to panic. Church, I just came here this morning to ask you, do you trust him enough to walk with him? What did Jairus do? He kept walking with the Savior. He got the bad news, but he just kept walking. What are you going to do when the situation goes from bad to worse? What are you going to do when your marriage goes from bad to worse? What are you going to do whenever that job goes from bad to worse? When the children go from bad to worse when the finances go from bad to worse. And I can hear Jesus asking us this morning, do you trust me enough to walk with me? Do you allow the word of God to immediately penetrate your heart when things go from bad to worse? And I can hear him asking this morning, Jairus, I heard the same report as you. But do you trust me enough to walk with me? When the Lord tells us not to be afraid, when he says not to panic, he's not saying that what you're going through isn't real. He's not saying that it's not dire circumstances. He's not negating the fact that you're going through something. Because Jairus was really going through something. His daughter was dead. That's about as real as it gets. She was dead. And Jesus didn't deny the reality of that situation. But Jesus knew that whenever he enters the situation, everything changes. Hallelujah. Everything changes. No word is final until he has spoken. And the biggest thing of all is Jesus doesn't do funerals. Hallelujah. Jesus doesn't do a funeral. Do you remember Lazarus? He was four days gone. Jesus hung around the outskirts of town and everyone questioned why. Why are you not going to him? Why are you not going to heal him? Because Jesus wanted to slay whenever he walks in the room, whenever he comes into the situation, everything changes. And Jesus doesn't do funerals. Hallelujah. No, Jesus just kept walking towards Jairus' house, just as he had been doing before the bad report came. He had started out with Jairus because of his faith, and he didn't intend to stop now just because the physical circumstances had changed. Jesus is saying to you this morning, do you trust me enough to walk with me? I heard the news. I heard the report. I know what you're going through. I understand the pain. But do you trust me enough to walk with me? I'm going to keep walking to your house. Do you trust me enough to walk with me? I'm going to your home in spite of the report that your daughter is dead. In spite that all hope seems lost. Do you trust me? enough to walk with me. Jesus told everybody else in verse 37, except for Peter, James, and John, he said, all of you leave. Everybody that's following, I need you to leave. I think this verse is telling us that there are going to be times that friends and family aren't going to make that journey with you. Sometimes your circle's going to leave you and you're going to be alone. But do you trust enough to walk with me? Jesus walked into the house. He took the little girl by the hand, and he looked at her, and he spoke the words, Jesus, little girl, 
I say unto you, arise. And she did. Somebody hear me this morning. Somebody open up your ears. Somebody focus in on what God is trying to tell you. If you'll just walk with Jesus, if you'll just stay with him in times of adversity, in the times of the storm, if you'll refuse to let go of your faith, if you'll continue to walk when all seems hopeless, if you'll continue to keep your eyes on him, if you'll continue to walk when everybody else is saying it's over, whenever they tell you that your child is spiritually dead, whenever they tell you that your spouse is spiritually dead, whenever they tell you that your dream is dead, your vision is dead, your ministry is dead, if you will just keep walking. Jesus can and Jesus will make a way. Hallelujah. I want you to stand with me this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Do you trust me enough to walk with me? I can resurrect your marriage even when it seems dead. Do you trust me enough to walk with me? I can resurrect your finances even when you don't have credit enough to buy a pack of bubble gum. Do you trust me enough to walk with me? Your situation may look dead. It may look hopeless. But if you walk with me, if you'll just walk with me, do you trust me enough to walk with me? Knowing that what your eyes see, that's not your reality. Knowing that God has a greater plan for you. Do you trust me enough to walk with me? To trust that Jesus still has a plan for you and your family and you've not been left alone you've not been forsaken but there is a God who still sees you who wants to raise you up who wants to cultivate you into the man or woman of God that has been spoken over your life do you trust him enough to walk with him do you trust me enough to walk with me don't panic don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. It's not over for you yet. Don't lose your faith. There's still a God who hears you. There's still a God who sees you. There's still a God who has a plan and a purpose beyond your wildest dreams. But it's up to you this morning. It's up to you, just like Jairus, he had to step out. He had to get out of his comfort zone, and he had to take that first step towards that walk. He had to begin walking toward Jesus. And whenever he got there, he had to say, I need you. morning there are some of us who've been trying to do it on our own we've lost our way somehow and we've we've let our guard down and we've let some things in that shouldn't be in and we've we've somehow we've gotten so confused we're off the path and all Jesus is looking for and all he's waiting for is for you to take that step toward him for you to place your faith back in him again and then what does that verse say? It says, and Jesus went with him. He's waiting this morning. This morning, if that's you, I don't know the storms you're going through. I don't know the valleys you're facing. I don't know the sickness, the reports that you've heard. I don't know the sin that you've let creep in, but I can tell you this this morning. The one thing that I do know is that there is a God who is waiting for you. There is a God who is waiting for you to take that step of faith. And whenever you take that step of faith, he's going to start walking right beside you. 
but it's going to take you making the first move. This morning, if that's you, would you step out this morning, make that step of faith, saying, Jesus, I want you to walk with me every step of the way. I'm putting my faith and my trust in you that this situation is going to work, work out. I'm putting my faith and my trust in you that I'm not doing this alone. I believe that I'm going to be healed. I believe that I'm going to step into my calling. I believe that the things I've been praying for, I'm going to see them come to pass because you're with me. I'm desperate this morning, God. My desperation is going to trigger the transformation. Hallelujah. Thank you. To the questions, the fears, and the whys, but somebody hears, it's desperate for freedom. From the past, the chains, and the lies, feels like you wasted so much.
your questions, your fears, and the why. Somebody here is desperate for freedom from your past, your chains, and the lies. Somebody here. God some praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We serve a God that is able to meet us right where we are. We serve a God that doesn't know what the word over means. We serve a God that is ready to walk with us every step of the way. And as you leave here this morning, you can rejoice in knowing that you're not leaving here alone, that you are leaving here with the master, the savior, the redeemer, the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end, the one who holds it all in his future. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I thank you for joining me here this morning. I thank God for I want to ask Bobby if he'll come up here and dismiss us in prayer, prayer, pray a prayer of protection over us. Hallelujah. Father, Lord, we thank you today, God, for your love and your mercy, Lord. We thank you today, Father, Lord, for an anointed word, God. Father, Lord, we thank you, Father, Lord, for the servant's heart, Father, Lord, to deliver the word, Father, Lord, to your people. God, I thank you, Father, Lord, for the hedge of protection, God, and the the abilities, Father Lord, that you have given us, Father Lord, to come into your house today, Father Lord, to be blessed. God, I ask you, Father Lord, to, have to, to extend that same hand of protection, God. And Lord, and go with us, Father Lord, throughout the rest of our day, God, and throughout the rest of the week, God. I pray, Father Lord, that you would keep us, Father Lord. God, I pray, Father Lord, for those that are sick in body, God, and could not be here today, Father Lord, that you touch them right where they are, Father. God, I pray for those that are watching via the live stream today, Father Lord, that you would lift them up, God, that you would turn their life around, God, Lord, that you would bless them, Father Lord, right where they are, God. Lord, I thank you today, Father Lord, for it has been good to be in the house of the Lord today. And we ask you, Father Lord, to go with us and bless us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen.
Hey, I, I think I think there's some apples and stuff that's left over in the fellowship hall. Um, they're really good, so make sure you grab you a bag of them. Be careful um, in the weather that's coming. If you guys need anything, just contact me. Love you guys.